Hello friends, Coach Bob with you today, and today we're going to be talking about a few interesting tidbits of information that you might be interested in. Uh, here recently, I was invited to go uh, online with a BRP release of the 2022 lineup. Now, you, a couple of years ago, I shared a, a video where I had done that already. It was interesting because a couple of years ago, there was only, uh, of the influencers, there was myself, Martin the Vlogger, and Lamont from LaMonster was on there. And then the rest of it was kind of industry people. This time, it looked dramatically different. There were well over 100 people online. Um, Lamont was there, by the way. He looked very, very good, too, by the way. So uh, that that's great news. So we're glad to see that Lamont from LaMonster is doing, doing well. But there were a lot of YouTube influencers on there, and other than myself and Lamont, maybe Martin the Vlogger was there, but there were over 100. I didn't see his name in the list, although he probably was there. Over, Well over 95% of those people were Riker riders. So that should give you an idea of what the YouTube influencer world is and what is going on with BRP and the direction they're going. And I think when we talk about their lineup and the things that they've changed over the last year, I think you're going to see that that is definitely the direction they're going. So without further ado, I'm going to talk to you about the spider. I've got a few notes here. If you see me glancing down, uh, we're talking about the spider F3 and the spider RT. So let's talk about the RT first because it is near and dear to my heart. I ride an RT, 2019 RT, non-limited edition. It is an excellent machine. I love it. Uh, the more I see the 2021 and now the 22s, the more I do want to get a new one. I do like the newer body style, I'll just be honest with you. However, I would like to do another couple of tours on the machine that I have now, kind of get my money's worth out of it. But let's talk about the RT this year. There's not a whole lot to say other than this. The Sea to Sky was extended for another year with a new color change. The color now is mystery blue with a satin finish with silver trim and has a 12 spoke wheel. Hopefully I can drop some pictures up here and here as I talk. Has adjustable wind deflectors and they added a rider backrest. I believe that all comes stock on it. Other than that, the RT lineup has changed with colors. Yeah, that's pretty boring. It's pretty boring. There's not a whole lot of change on the RT. I wish I had greater news for you. I wish they were telling me about some amazing new thing they've done, but there is nothing to tell you. The F3, there have been some changes to the F F3. Uh, big thing, there again, colors, 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 just new paint colors. Um, the F3S now comes with a KYB suspension. That's the F3S and the F3S Special. There's the Sport. And then there's the sports special. Anyway, comes with the new matcha green color and the KYB suspension. Also, the F3, if you bought the base model, for whatever reason, you were punished for it historically in the horsepower range. Apparently, they detuned that engine down to about 100 horsepower. Now you're getting the full 115 horsepower that you should have gotten all along. So I, it's a change. It's a good change, but it really should have never been the other way to begin with. Now, the F3 Limited Special Series, I'm going to tell you, that looks pretty nice. They've got this thing available in this red color. It's like a Ferrari red or something. It really is nice looking. has a comfort seat and a backrest like the Sea to Sky Edition has. has this long reach handlebar. Now, I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, aesthetically, the long reach handlebar just looks goofy. It may be great functionally, but it just looks silly to me. Uh, I, I, I can see myself sitting on one, and if it sat right, the F3 Limited a Special Series could be in the future or in a year or two. But it has a, a rack that goes on the top of the case that comes with it. It has uh, some additional lighting, little fog light looking deals down there, and a new front grille, which looks really sharp, and a 10-spoke wheel. Is that all there is to the F3s? Yep.
There was one other change to the RT and the F3 lineup, the price. So the price is different. I'll drop those numbers in right here and you can see the price difference. So not a lot on the F3 and the RT. This meeting that we sat in was 47 minutes long. I've been speaking now for approximately five minutes, and I've told you everything new about the RT and the F3. And I've probably gone into greater detail than they did in this video. That should give you a general idea of the direction they're going. I'm going to share some statistics with you that they shared at the very beginning of this meeting that you may find quite interesting. This is where Can-Am is going. I just want you to know how that's going to look in the future. You know, when you really look at the big picture, how's it going to be? Well, only time will tell. But right now, the Riker is opening up doors. And it's making Can-Am something that I don't think they really ever saw coming. And, and it, it really, it, it's a good thing for the company. I'm hoping that a lot of this success will spill over into the RT and the F3 lineup. But I do have my doubts. Judging from looking at this year and the product development, it, it's just it's just different. So now, where is Can-Am going? If they're not developing the F3, and they're not developing the RT, and they're really not, um, what are they developing? Are they developing anything? And they are. They're developing the Riker big time, big time. That is where Can-Am is going. That is where their focus is going. That is where their money is going. That is where their advertising is going. That's where it's going. Just, just that's where it is. What they were saying in the beginning of this meeting, the Riker has made writing more accessible. More accessible due to ease of writing and cost, the lower cost. However, the Riker's gone up quite a bit, quite a bit. Um, I think that could slow the growth down. Maybe, maybe not. It just depends on what people are going to make in the future and what the economy is going to look like. Can-Am is the fastest growing company in the industry right now as far as their type of product. Now, they did not say the fastest of all motorcycles. They did not say the fastest of all off-road or on-road. So are they looking at a three-wheel demographic? Well, it's a pretty small field. Um, I think they're talking about in the motorcycle industry. And I don't find that hard to believe because they are growing really, really fast. And the biggest part of that is the Riker. That is absolutely undeniable. And all one has to do is go to a trike fest and see, just look around to see the number of Rikers that are there. The, the, the big thing about the Riker, more than 50% of Riker owners have never ridden a motorcycle before. So you're taking someone who was sitting in their living room, whatever, and now they go out and buy a motorcycle, three-wheeled motorcycle, and they're riding for the first time. That's, that's, you're tapping into a market that just was never tapped into. And this is how they phrased it. 49% of those riders are visible minorities. And 33% of those riders are women. So they're tapping into a market that has not been tapped into before. And that is where Can-Am is going. And that's a good thing for the company. What does it mean for us touring folks? Us folks that want a machine that's going to tour across the country comfortably. Well, I believe, honestly, I'm just gonna say this. Do they really need to develop the Spider a lot more? Not really, not for me. There are things that I would like to see on there. And this was one of the things that I had asked the question they had a Q&A session where you could type in a question. I did a timestamp in my mind and I've got it on my computer so I could go back and look at it. I asked when they were going or if they were going to develop a handbrake for the spiders so that disabled folks, wounded warriors, that sort of thing, or folks with nervous system problems would be able to ride solo without having to go out and buy a $2,000 aftermarket handbrake. They did not even address the question. They answered the question before that question. They answered the question after that question. I later typed the question in again, yet again, it was ignored. 
If that tells you where the handbrake development in the future is going, um, not answering simply means that they didn't want to answer with a negative answer on a press release, and I understand that. This was them taking a victory lap over their new product line, and I think that is a wonderful thing, and I applaud them for allowing me to be a part of that. So don't think that I'm slamming BRP, because I'm not, but I want you to understand, for those of you, and there are many of you out there, and because I do have a wife that's disabled, as you know, um, I've gotten a lot of questions from, from riders that uh, don't have mobility in their legs and their feet, and they were wanting to buy things from the factory that would be covered by warranty. Folks were worried about, you know, putting something on the spider and all of a sudden their warranty's no good. That's what people were afraid of. We've seen companies do that. Hopefully BRP would not be that short-sighted and go, well, you're paralyzed and you knew that putting another brake on it was going to mess this up. Therefore, we're not going to help you out. Hopefully that would not happen. All right, so let's talk about the Rikers, the Riker Rally Edition. And again, I'll drop some pricing points up here for you. The Riker Rally Edition got a lot of major, major changes on. In fact, the Riker, again, they're just super duper 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 developing this thing. Um, if you're not a Riker person, I still think you should give it a look. Um, it's something that I think you might appreciate at least the development of it. Uh, the Riker Rally Edition has a push bar on the front of it now. The Riker Rally Edition is mainly so that you can like get off road and spend donuts in the dirt and that sort of thing. And it just looks a little heavier duty. But it has a push bar in the front, has welded A-arm protection, has a newly redesigned hood that has some open areas so you can adjust your front you can adjust your front suspension right there on the fly that's a pretty nice feature i would love to see a more adjustable suspension on the spiders as well hint to brp has a new front accent led light i would love to see more led lights on the uh, spiders i've talked about that in the past about how i feel the lighting is inadequate on the spider uh, the foot pegs, very cool feature here. The foot pegs are not only adjustable fore to aft, but also in width, they are adjustable. That's a really nice feature. A new handlebar supposedly makes it easier for when you're changing your position when you're riding off-road. They have some little uh, filters for the air intake just to keep dust from getting into your breather. Not really a big deal on that. Big deal here though, cruise control. Cruise control comes on the Riker now, big deal. Um, they have an aftermarket, uh, a crop of it, uh, exhaust. They say the exhaust doesn't really add any horsepower, it just makes it a little louder. So do with that what you want. Uh, they have new underbelly aluminum skid plates on it, uh, mud flaps, and they have a new, this is something that I'm really interested in also. Um, they knew I have a rally mode these rider modes that we talk about on other motorcycles, I would like to see more rider modes available on all of the spiders. This rally mode um, is super cool, apparently. Gives you a chance to get off the, on the dirt and drift without all of the, the nanny stuff kicking in. The one thing that I noticed on the rally that, here again, it's an aesthetic thing. It's something that you'll either love or you'll hate. Personally, I think it's uglier, those big white wheels. Don't like them. I don't think they look very good. But your opinion may greatly vary on that. So you may love it. Then let's talk about the traditional Riker, the sport, the base models, the, the 900 and the 600. Uh, they have a max mount section on the rear. Um, KYB adjustable rear suspension and KYB front suspension, I don't believe that is adjustable. I do like the wheels they put on the standard Rikers. I like them way better than the wheels on the Rally Edition. They're very open. They're very open, like a, like a wheel on a modern sports car, and I think that really looks great. Um, and the Rikers, the other Rikers, also come with cruise control with stock. That's really cool. Now, I do want to say one thing about the white wheels on the Rally Edition. I understand that if you're getting off-road, you don't want a lot of rocks and stuff flying inside the wheel and all that. Maybe they're trying to impede some of that by having that more closed-in look. I just don't like the way it looks.
All right, so now let's talk accessories. Now, when it comes to accessories, there again, you're not going to get a lot of stuff on the Spider, uh, the RT, or the F3. The backrest that folds down, that seems to be pretty much the extent of new accessories, unless there are things that they added that they did not highlight. And I don't believe that's what they were looking to do, because the intent of this was to bring in new accessories and new things. For the Riker, over 20 new accessories. I'm going to share the accessories they highlighted and shared with me. You can go online and look it up if you want to, see what some of these things cost. I'm not gonna go through an extensive analysis of each part or a huge cost analysis, but I will try to show some pictures and let you know what they felt were their top new accessories. So the first, and I think this is a big one, um, they saw a lot of people, and I did too, um, going to these trike rallies and all of these different rallies. And the big thing that you'll notice about the Rikers are speakers, speaker pods, man, audio, audio, audio. That's a very big deal on the Riker. And in that market, that's just a big deal. Can-Am has jumped on board and designed their own speaker system at 130 watts. It's called the Premium Audio System. It mounts to the handlebars, comes with a windshield mount, so you can put a windshield up on there as well. Um, has two four-inch speakers, and they say it sounds pretty darn good. I do look forward to actually hearing one in real life. They also have floorboards for the Riker. So they have made floorboards for the Riker, which I think is pretty nice. I think that was a necessity, especially for a lot of the folks that, you know, have problems with their feet. It's definitely going to make it better. They have a front bend organizer with a high-vis liner in there that is uh, makes it easier to see the things you put in there. It has a lot of little zipper pouches, that kind of thing. They also have a Link Urban Bag. Now, we talked about the Link system last year. Um, it goes on the back of a Spider or on the back of the Riker to where you basically can clamp in different boxes, different things. Um, but this Urban Bag, basically, it locks on to the Link system like a carrying bag. And when you get to where you're going, you unhook it and you put it on like a backpack. So pretty cool. Also, they have a 10 liter modular box that you can just carry items in, or you can put a thermal liner inside of that box and make it a cooler. That's pretty nice as well. They have link extension plates that go up on the side of this link plate in order for you to put different items that you may want to carry if you're going camping, soft gear, that you could put a net over or bungee cords over. It just gives you an attachment point for those things. But again, 20 new accessories for the Riker. The questions were monopolized by Riker accessories, Riker questions, and Riker appreciation. That's where it is, that's where it was, and that's where it's going. Again, if you're a spider rider, and when I say a spider, there's the spider, the F3s and the RTs, and then there is the Riker, which is not considered a Spider. It's the Riker. So the Spider Riders, you're just not getting a lot of new stuff this year, but we really don't need a lot of new stuff. One question that was asked, uh, apart from the unpopular question of the handbrake, which was ignored that I told you I asked, was were there any changes, updates, or help with that darn BRP app? And the answer is, nope. Nope, it's still buggy, still gonna be a problem, still gonna lock, at, lock itself up every time you turn the bike off. It's still gonna be irritating. So the BRP app, ha, deal with it, just the way it is. My advice, buy you a nice GPS, don't worry about it. All right, well there you have it. The BRP lineup, the Rikers, the RTs, the F3s, all of it, all done, just like that. Super quick, super easy. You know what I want to hear? I want to hear your comments down below. What do you think of the direction that BRP is making? Do you think there should be more product development in the spider line? Or do you think we're okay kind of where we are? Your opinion matters here. And suffice it to say, if I'm being asked to go to these events and I share these videos, look, I am not beholden to BRP. I share the truth, the things I like, and the things I don't like. And they invite me to be a part of these things because of what I am doing and what you're doing. It is through dissatisfaction and satisfaction that they can better do their job and they're more empowered to know what the end user wants or demands 
for the machine that they ride. So I want you to comment down below, light up that comment section with the things that you want, the things that you're satisfied with, the things you don't want, that sort of thing. It doesn't matter how small it is or how big it is. Make sure you share it because BRP is watching and they're listening to you and to me. And for that, I am very, very thankful. All right. So until next time, I want you to do me a favor. Go out, buy the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself. And remember, if you're not having fun, you are definitely doing it wrong. Now we'll see you on the road real soon. Thank you.